Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to SQL Server Performance Monitoring and Tuning video brought to you by SQLworkshops.com. In this video, we will talk about SQL Command Timeout, also known as Application Timeout. When you use ODBC or SQL Client to access data from SQL Server, by default, the query will be cancelled if there is no response from the server within a certain period of time. The default period is 30 seconds. ODBC or SQL client will start the timer after sending the query to SQL Server. And if there are no results from the server within 30 seconds, the query will be cancelled and a timeout error message will be sent to the application. In case a network packet containing query results was received within the 30 seconds, and if we are expecting additional network packets, additional rows that couldn't fit in the first network packet, then the timer is restarted. If the next network packet is not received within this 30 second, then the query will be canceled. The common reasons for SQL command timeout are non-optimal schema, inefficient queries that execute for a long period of time, missing indexes, or lock weight issues. It is important to tune the queries rather than increase the SQL command timeout settings. Let's look at an example. To practice these examples, we will use SQL test tool. If you don't have SQL test tool, you can install SQL test tool from sqltest.org. You can go to download. There you will see a link to install SQL test. Once you have SQL test tool installed, you can go to File, Open Online Examples. There you will see the example SQL attention that we will use now. So in this example, we will create a database called SQL test. We will create a table called tab72 in this uh, sorry, the database name is SQL Workshops. We will create a, a table called Tab72 in the database SQL Workshops, and we will create a bunch of store procedures, PROC1, PROC2, until PROC5. To practice this example, you don't need to change the SQL test setup if you are going to use a local default instance, that is, your SQL Server, where you want to practice these examples, is installed on your local computer, and it is not using named instance, that is the default instance. If you have a remote instance where you want to practice this example, or you have named instance, then you have to change the connection string. If you go to File, Open Online Examples, there's an example, Online Example Setup. This will explain how to change the connection string to practice these examples. So let's get started. So let's execute this script, which will create the database, table, and store procedures. Uh, to do that, you have to be in the Workload 4 tab, and you click on Start Current. This will create the database, the table, and store procedures. Let's do refresh. And now if you go to databases, there is a database called SQL Workshops, and there you will find the table and the store procedures that we created. So let's look at the example. So here we are going to execute PROC1. And I will show you what is in PROC1. We have a table called tab72, and the PROC1 is going to select from this table. So the PROC1 has three statements. Before every statement, it waits for five seconds to create some kind of a delay. So the first statement selects row one to four, the second statement selects row five to eight, and the third statement, 9 to 10, altogether 10 rows. Each row is about 2,200 bytes. If you see, it says select C1, C2, C3 from tab 72. Our tab 72 has integer, integer, and character 2,200 byte column. So we are using 
uh, SQL client, that's a .NET application. So when you use a .NET application uh, and you send a query to SQL Server, the SQL ser Server will send the results in terms of network packets. A network packet by default is 8,000 bytes. So in our case, since our row is 2,200 bytes, SQL will fit three rows in one network packet in full, and the fourth row will be partially filled in because the fourth row will not fit entirely in this 8,000 byte network packet. To give you an idea, we will look here. So here is our network packet. We have row one, two, and three fully present. Row four is partially there because it couldn't fit the row four, and the row four will be in the next network packet. So what SQL will do is, once it got one network packet fully filled in, it will send to us, and it will wait for sending the next network packet until the network packet is full or the batch is complete. In our case, the batch will not be complete because we have two more statements, and it will wait five seconds before sending the second network packet because SQL will not send partially filled in packets until the batch is complete. So when we start this PROC1, you will see here, we will go to workload one, we go to PROC1, we go to results. Here I execute uh, click on start current. It will start the current workload, which is workload one proc one. Let's click on start current. Look, after five seconds, we will have three rows because it would have received the first packet, which has three rows fully present, and it will wait for five more seconds, and then it will have row five, six, and seven, and later on, eight, nine, and 10. The way it works is, first SQL gives the first packet, and then after five seconds, and then it has a second packet not fully filled in. After five seconds of wait, we are filling in this packet. So row five, six, and seven will be fully packed in this packet, but row eight will not fully fit in. So after waiting for five seconds, we saw row until seven. And after that, five seconds, it will wait, and then row uh, nine and 10 fit in this packet, and we receive the packet. So meanwhile, we don't have any timeout. To demonstrate uh, this timeout example, I changed the default SQL command timeout from 30 seconds to 7 seconds because I want to uh, not take too long to demonstrate this example. The way I changed it, I go to settings, I go to workload settings, there I changed it to 7. The default is 30. So what happens when we execute? We never exceed the seven second timeout because we wait for five seconds, we get a network packet. We wait for one more five seconds, we get the next network packet. And we wait for one more five second and we get the last network packet. What we will do now, execute PROC2. Let's show how the PROC2 looks here. So this is the PROC2. Here we are executing the first statement which brings row one to four but you get only one network packet with row one, two, three, and fourth row is partially there. And we are waiting for the second network packet. So we wait for five seconds, and there is a network packet here. So the second network packet, after five seconds, SQL fills in row five, six, and seven, because we say only until row seven. So it fills in five, six, and seven. And the network packet is not fully filled in, so it will not send us the second network packet until the second network packet is filled in, which will take five more seconds to get row eight. So if you look here, after five more seconds, it will fill in row eight like before eight nine and ten but we will have a timeout before that because we would be waiting 10 seconds to get the second network packet let's look at this example let's go to workload one and change this to proc two and we will do start current so if you look here after five seconds we will have until row three but we have to wait 10 seconds to get the rest before that that SQL command timeout kicks in and we have a timeout. 
Let's look at a real world example. Here I have store procedure three and four. If you look at store procedure three and four, store procedure four does an update of uh, key value 20. C1 is our primary key, key value 20, it updates. And in store procedure three, that's proc three, we are selecting row between one and 10, but we are using column C2 in the predicate, which doesn't have an index, which will trigger a table scan. We are in fact not looking for row uh, 20, because in my case, if you look at the table creation script, I have C1 and C2 the same. But since we don't have index on C2, SQL Server will have to scan the table to find out which rows qualify for between 1 and 10. So here we execute this statement. And if this statement waits more than 7 seconds, we will have a timeout. Let me show you how we are going to execute the statement. Here is the update statement, the PROC4. And here in the workload setting, I tell begin a transaction, roll back after the update, but I ask this workload to wait 10 seconds before rolling back. So it begins a transaction, does the update, it will wait 10 seconds before rolling back. So the other store procedure cannot complete before this 10 seconds. So if you go to workload two, here we have proc three. This is going to read the row. That's a select the row between one and 10. If I go to settings here and workload settings, I say connect after two seconds. So I give possibility for workload three to establish the connection and lock while workload two will start connecting after two seconds and it will try to read while it will wait for the lock. So it will uh, connect after two seconds and then it will start the select statement. So let's now start workload two and three, that is proc three and four concurrently. To do that, you go to the start custom and type two and three and click on start custom. It will start workload two and three together. So what happens is after two seconds, this connects and it will wait up to seven seconds before it gets timeout. So two plus seven, nine seconds, it got the timeout. So if you go to settings here, and look at the workload settings, we have command timeout set to seven and we got a timeout. We will talk about how to uh, resolve this particular timeout issue shortly. Before that, I want to give you an, another example to show how network packets are involved in resetting this timer. You know, this uh, seven second or 30 second timeout is managed by this timer on the client side. Let's look at that example. I go to workload four and it will show you the last store procedure, store procedure five. In this store procedure, we wait for five seconds and we execute the select statement to bring us row one and two. And we wait for five more seconds and we execute the second select statement, which brings us row three. So if you go to the PowerPoint slide, it will look something like this. These are the three rows that we need and all of them fit in the same network packet row one two three if you see row one two and three the change here is uh, we wait for five seconds and then we get the we should get the network packet but the network packet is not fully filled in because row three is not there yet since the batch is not complete or the procedure is not complete sql will not send us the network packet it's waiting for the next row to get there and then the batch is complete and it will send us a network packet. Meanwhile, we get a timeout. Let's execute this example. Let's go to workload one. Here we change this to five, that is proc five. When I execute proc five, I click on start current, I execute. I will have a timeout because SQL is waiting for seven seconds. It doesn't get any packet because the packet is fully filled in only after the batch is complete, which needs a 10 second wait. That's what happens here. So let's now combine this with the size of the network packet. What happens if I decrease the size of network packet? Let's say if I decrease the size of network packet to 
4,000, yeah, 4 kilobyte. What happens then? SQL puts the first row in the network packet. The second row doesn't fully fit in. So part of the second row is there, but we get the network packet and then the timer starts again and it will uh, not exceed next seven seconds because within five seconds, we will get the next network packet. To practice this example, we need to change the packet size. So here is a way I will change the packet size in the connection string. I say packet size is four kilobyte. Now we will execute the same example. We will go to the results and we will do a start current. So what happens after five seconds, you get the first network packet, but the row two is not fully filled in. So it gives you the row one. After the next five seconds, we get row two and three. The reason I explain this is by changing the network packet size, you cannot avoid command timeout messages. Just to give you an idea how the timer and the network packet work together that how they get reset to measure again the time between delay between every network packet. Now let's talk about how to monitor the timeout. We will use extended events to monitor the timeout. So here is an example where we can create a timeout. When we execute PROC5, this leads to a timeout. Uh, we will create the, create the extended event session and go to SQL video. And there is the extended event, X events link. If you click there, here you can generate the extended event script. You can choose which version of SQL and service pack you are using. And we will choose the event attention. So this is the event attention. And we are going to write the event using a file target to uh, C drive. So in the C drive, I have a X events directory. If you want to use a different drive, you can change it here and generate the script. So I do the script here and here is the script. I will copy the script to management studio. Here I copy the script to management studio. Uh, what the script does is it scripts this event and also it scripts the scripts a view to read the XML data as row. So what we are going to do is create the view and the event. And then we will start uh, the event. We will go here and we will start the event. If you have already some files in this directory, you can either manually delete them in the uh, Explorer or you can use a SQL Server command shell to delete these files. I have no files there, as you can see. So I will start the event. Now, if I execute uh, this workload, that is a workload one, proc five, I will get a timeout. After I get the timeout, I can go stop the workload. And you see there is a file where the attention is there. Of course, you cannot see, but we will uh, load the file into a temporary table and we will uh, in the tempdb and we will use this view to read from this XML data. That's this uh, statement. We will execute this and here you see there is an attention from the app name SQL test workload one and so on. And this is the uh, statement that exec proc five led to the timeout. Now we will see how to resolve the timeout. One reason why we had the timeout was we were doing a scan of the table that led to the timeout. So when you do a start custom of two and three, the second workload was doing a table scan and the third workload had a row locked, a row that is not related to our query. So we got a timeout. So what we can do is we can simply create an index on the table on column C2. So we'll create the index and now we will execute workload two and three. Since there is an index, it is not doing a table scan. It is just doing a seek and it's able to read the row. So we don't have a timeout. So when you have a timeout, it's important to tune the query, create the index, optimize the schema, avoid lock weights, and not just increase the timeout. It doesn't solve the real issue.
I want to show you an another example. When you hit the cancel query button in Management Studio, again, you will have an attention event. Let's look at that example. Here is a query that I'm going to run. It runs for about 10 seconds. I will start the query. And if I think it is running too long, of course, I can hit the cancel executing query button. Once I hit that, the Management Studio sends the cancel request to SQL Server and the query will be canceled. And this will lead to, again, an attention event. The same thing happens when you click the query cancel button in the SQL test tool. Let's look at this example. This time we will use extended events, but we will use uh, ring buffer target. So I click on the ring buffer, same event, attention, and I script. So we have a ring buffer target. I will copy this uh, script in the Management Studio. And here again, we create the view which reads the XML in the row format. And then we create the event. So we will just click anywhere here in a white space, which will create the view and the event. And then we will start the event. And then we will go to Management Studio window where our long running query is. And then we will stop the query in the middle, cancel the query. And then we will execute the statement to read from the ring buffer. And it shows there is a attention event waiting for us. And when you click on the view itself, you see the details of the attention event, which is Management Studio Query, and it is selecting from SQL Workshops, where C3-like SQL Workshops. In this video, we covered what is SQL Command Timeout. We practiced some examples related to Command Timeout. We monitored Command Timeout using extended events. And finally, we resolved the Command Timeout by creating an index to avoid lock weight due to table scan. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to contact me. Bye.